What is up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Diego, I'm a life sciences graduate who's looking to get into medicine. On this channel I basically share my journey to medical school uh, alongside other things like productivity, lifestyle and stuff like that. Anyway, my last video was on the whole GAMSAT March 2021 experience and some of you liked it, some of you have been uh, sending me comments and messages on some of the things I did to improve my school across all of my sittings. And so today's video is going to be actually quite a different one, but I think it's going to be quite useful in knowing how to approach the exam and then also knowing how to uh, set up your resources and your workflow for the exam. So today I'm going to be showing you around my Notion setup for the GAMSA exam. So this is a template I set up and basically I use it to keep on top of my GAMSA work. Um, it's not an absolute necessity for everyone to have this, uh, but I thought it might be useful just for you to also look at the things that I was looking at prior to the exam, some of the things I was taking note of and also how I was starting to organise my workflow and my revisions sessions and stuff like that so hopefully this video will be useful will be helpful and before we get into it don't forget to like comment and subscribe and check out all of my other videos on my youtube channel okay let's get into it right guys so i'll start showing you around my notion uh, page for the gamsat and I'll basically start explaining about what my thoughts were, the purpose behind me creating this specific part was, and hopefully it will help you and hopefully you can replicate it on your own Notion setup if you have one as well. Um, I would like to reiterate that this is only something that helped me, I think. You know, it's not a necessity and it's not something that you're going to have to need to implement to pass uh, or get a good score. You know, obviously this is just something that I use and it was quite helpful in helping me store everything. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so what you'll see here is that I've got basically a home page, right? And it may look quite disorganized depending on who's looking at it, but for me, it, just, it works for me actually. And so on the left, I basically got some extra pages and stuff that I can go in deeper. The daily task, so I added finishing with flashcards, spending 30 minutes a day. In reality, it started to change actually, and it was maybe 15, 20 minutes every three or four days. Um, but the reason why I actually included that was because I remember um, in my first and second sittings, I was trying to cram all of this knowledge in, um, in, the, in the last bit of the of revision. And the bad thing about it was that I was using up time where I could be practicing questions. So my idea behind implementing this here was that I could, you know, potentially, hopefully, avoid spending all of this time at the end trying to cram knowledge because as I was going ahead, as I was going on in my preparation, I'd already been storing this information. Now we've got the exam strategy thing here. So basically, I, I did a course with... Uh, this, a guy called Barry Lowe and some of the things that he started to sort of uh, mention was that you know you could approach the questions by defining what the question was about, planning how you would approach it, executing and then reflecting and so I found that this was re really useful for the actual exam but more so for the actual preparation so when I was doing my own questions at home and the reason was because you know it, it helps you like a key aspect of it was defining the question. So what was the question actually asking me? Because sometimes there's so much information that it, you can sort of get lost on the, in the way. And then reflecting. So if I didn't get it right, I'd start to think about why didn't I get it right? What was I missing? What skill could I have used to, to get the question right? And so it just helped me to sort of structure my, my thinking for the questions. And I also had a to-do list which was, you know, register for the exam, which I actually nearly missed, um, to do one section two essay per week, which I actually kept to this time. But weirdly enough, I actually got a worse mark than last year, even though last year I only prepared, like, I think I did only four essays in preparation. And then looking at gold standard webinars. So I actually never did this. Um, for my second sitting, I did some 
but in hindsight I sort of found that it wasn't that useful it was quite time consuming so I didn't use it um, so then yeah so exam key information so section one section two just stuff that I needed to know weak links so this was sort of something that I knew I wanted to have in mind for when I was doing my revision these were things that because I'd sat it before I already knew that were sort of weak links genetics questions for some reason I kept I couldn't answer properly for quite some time and then also something that I picked up as well was that I used to leave my physics revision on topics all the way to the end and in doing so it would I just start cramming stuff and I wouldn't learn it properly so I just thought it would be better to start earlier on and just to allow myself for time to actually develop the knowledge and the skills and become more comfortable with it so I had this and every time I was doing work I'd just think about am I doing stuff to contribute to strengthen these weak links now as we scroll we scroll down we are going to see that um, yeah we're going to see basically that we have the calendar here and basically this was like a log of all of my study sessions so in total up until the 2nd of March I did more but I think I just stopped logging I did about 104 hours of revision so I started in December the 30th and then what I'll do is that I basically say how I felt so a lot of goods towards the end quite a lot of hmms and quite a lot of okays in the beginning and something you'll notice is that the revision revision sessions weren't that long there's a few that were seven hours four hours and a bit two hours three hours but it was just a lot of small amounts in the end and but repeat repeat repeating consistently um so yeah that's one thing and so eventually i just put what it related to section three section two study and some comments now what i did for section one and two was that i needed to improve it so i had achieved a specific uh grade before which I think it probably makes more sense for me to show that first. So if I go to reflections from past exams, what I did was that I basically just tabulated somewhat my last goals, my last score, sorry, and then I put like a target. And thankfully I actually exceeded this target. Uh, and then also the reflections from my last setting. So basically started mentioning that, you know, the maths wasn't very complex. It was more about practicing mathematical rearrangements, being comfortable with applying maths to abstract um, situations. Like I remember there was a question about water filtration in bird lungs, which was so random. But for some reason, it just sort of stumped me last time I sat it. So a lot of it was for me just to practice applying those skills to different situations. Um, and then, yeah, genetics questions, I realized that there was something I was struggling to answer. And then I actually recorded, uh, once I finished the exam in June, I actually recorded myself all talking about all of the things that I had found difficult so I wouldn't forget, which is what this relates to here, which I sent to my wife and I'm sure it was pretty random for her to receive that message. So now I basically know what my weaknesses were. I set up section one and two, I put a nice heart to, you know, fall in love with it and improvement areas so for section one, tone interpretation, cartoon interpretation, poetry. Um, they still were quite weak to, to be honest towards the end. Um, section two, some of the sort of key points about section two, the different types of essays, essay writing involved, um, some of the stuff that I need to remember, task A examples with the structure, task B as well, structure opening closing styles um, examples of how people would write um, discursive essays and so on and then also idea based so obviously for section two a lot of it is that we need to come up with essay ideas basically on the spot so these are some of the things that i came across and for example if you go to let's say the lucifer effect in psychology and I basically had some main points. Brain dump was also some just random things that I couldn't really be bothered to, to organize that much, but I knew I could look into and just extract some information. 
keyword hot lists or some keywords that I knew would come up specifically in the poems and in the S1 questions. So just so I can remember, like banality or bay and um, trite, seldom, solace, all of these words come up and sometimes, you know, it, it could mean the difference between getting the point or not. Ideas, concepts and more, some ideas, stuff that, you know, you could sort of look into, which is what I did. And then definitions as well was something that I look, I did, but initially towards the end, in all reality, I didn't really add much to it because it's not about remembering stuff, you know, it's more about the reasoning. And so resources as well was something as well that I added, but eventually I ended up, ended up bookmarking most of the stuff so I didn't need it. Strategy was sort of breaking down a bit more of how this sort of, uh, way of thinking is um, is used and sort of some of the things to consider so whenever I was asked, asked um, so whenever I was answering questions basically I would just go back and look at this and you know think about how I could answer the questions sort of within this framework and that is pretty much it guys I mean it's a quite simple one but I found that it helped quite a lot to just keep on track and also to separate out from some of the stuff that I was doing aside from the GAMSAT. You know, it was sort of my own calendar, my own workflow within the whole GAMSAT uh, sort of preparation. And that's something that helped me quite a lot because I know most of you as well will probably be uh, working, revising, and you know, it, it can all become quite mixed up. So having this as a separate sort of uh, work set up helped me to sort of cop, um, separate stuff out and just make it easier for me to keep track on how many hours I was doing, how was I feeling, what did I last do, what could I pick up on and stuff like that so it was really useful and another thing that I'd like to stress just before I finish the video is that you know the reason even though I had sections where it like even though I had pages on the Notion setup where you know I would look into specific topics um, for me it wasn't it wasn't the case of me doing that because I wanted to memorize stuff but it was just for me to look back on quickly and know more or less the depth of knowledge I needed so if we go quickly back quickly into it so if we go into topic tracker um, what we'll notice is that I've got a lot of stuff here basically physics chemistry some of the core stuff um, but if we go, for example, into fluids in motion, some of the comments I left was that it's a good topic. Mathematically, it's not that hard, but it's just something that's going to require a lot of reviewing to just be more confident with the concepts and applying them to Gansat questions. And I was really confident in doing that actually this time around because um, I just consistently chipped away at it. And so you'll see that some of the information I've got here, it seems like a lot, but my my mindset in looking at this wasn't because I wanted to memorize all of this. It was that when I was practicing questions, I could come back and sort of look at what I missed out on and just sort of remember. And then I just bring in questions in and practice them, look at the solutions and so on. And so that was basically my idea behind it. It wasn't a case of me doing it. This guy's a legend here. He's always helping me out. <laughs> It wasn't a case of me, you know, setting all of this up just for me to, you know, memorize entirely. The idea for me was that I wanted to have this just as a thing that I could look back on if ever I was missing some information. And so, you know, think about the exam as 100%, well, not 100%, but the, the majority is reasoning. The knowledge you need to understand concepts and to be familiar and to understand the context of the questions and to not be completely surprised by, by what they're throwing at you. It's more for you just to understand, you know, what's going on. But don't feel like if, if a question comes up and you haven't revised that, don't immediately discount it as something that you can't answer because you've not looked over it. Uh, you know, it's all about reasoning and you need to really get into that. So I think that's it for, the, for this setup. Tool. It's there's not much really uh, aside from what I showed you right now. 
So if this video was of some use, if you'd like to see anything more like tips and stuff that I did to improve my score, let me know in the comment section below. I hope this video was of some use to you. And if it was, then like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.